Good morning, I'm Beth Wagner. Welcome to my channel focused on movement and function. Today's video is about treating vertigo, specifically BPPV, benign proxismal positional vertigo. I'll talk a little bit later more about what that is. I'll start today's video talking about what vertigo is and isn't, and then I'll show you how to determine where your vertigo is coming from, and then I'll demonstrate the most effective treatment. Some of you may have already done research on this and found exercises online, such as the Epley Maneuver. The key to effective treatment for vertigo is to know which side to do it on, and I will show you how to figure that out in this video. First of all, what is vertigo? And equally important, what isn't vertigo? Vertigo is the name used to describe a very specific sensation of spinning. This can either be feeling like the room is spinning around you or you are spinning in the room. Vertigo isn't generalized lightheadedness or dizziness. I suggest talking with your physician about that because there are many different things that can cause that. This video is going to be most helpful for people who are experiencing that specific sensation of spinning. The most common type of vertigo is BPPV. That's benign proxismal positional vertigo. While this video is not intended to be an anatomy lesson or a lecture, I do think it's very helpful to understand what vertigo is to demystify the diagnosis. If you've been told by your doctor you have BPPV, it can sound a bit ominous. And I wanna just knock that down for you and explain what it is. Benign indicates that this isn't anything serious. It means it's temporary and it's going to get better. Paroxysmal means that it comes and goes which also means it's treatable and we can get rid of it for good. Positional indicates that there are certain positions of the body that provoke or bring on the vertigo. It also means that we can treat it by knowing those positions and knowing how to adjust the positions to get rid of the issue. And finally, vertigo. I already explained what that is. So there you have it. That's BPPV. You might also see this abbreviated as BPV. It's the same thing. There are many possible causes of vertigo, the most common being a bump or a shake or a jarring motion to the head. This might happen as a result of a car accident, a slip and fall, or even a trip or a stumble where there is a very quick jarring motion of your head. The sudden jarring head motion breaks loose naturally occurring calcium particles in the inner ear. Those particles then stimulate nerve endings in the ear canal that send a faulty message to your brain about where you are in space. We have three canals on each side. If the calcium particles that have become loose in any one of those six canals starts to tell the brain that we're moving in a certain way, it causes confusion. This confusion results in a sensation of room spinning. Along with the room spinning, it's very common to feel nausea. And if it's severe enough, you may experience vomiting. In very, very rare cases, it may indicate something more serious going on. So if you also have lightheadedness, dizziness, severe headaches, vision changes, numbness, tingling, any other symptoms that are worrisome in your body, please see your healthcare provider. It's really important to make sure that there isn't anything significantly more serious going on than vertigo. Now I'll take you through the Dix Hall Pike test to determine which side is affected. From there, I'll show you the treatment based on the results of this test. Now the Dix Hall Pike test is a provocative test, meaning the purpose of it is to bring on the symptoms. That's necessary in order to determine which side is affected. The temporary discomfort of this test is well worth the information that it provides in order for you to do the most effective treatment to ultimately get rid of your vertigo. So I encourage you to take a few deep breaths and jump right into it. 
If your vertigo has been severe, I suggest you have a loved one standing next to you during this procedure to help you feel more safe and secure. You'll start out sitting at the edge of your bed and have a pillow close by. Position your pillow so that when you lie back, your head will be off the edge here. The Dix Hall Pike test is a two-part test. First, we'll test for the left side, then I'll test for the right side. I'll bring my legs up onto the table. I'll turn my head 45 degrees to the left, and then I'll lie back. My head is supported on the bed, but just off the edge of the pillow so that my head is tilted slightly below horizontal. Here I'm going to note if I have vertigo and how strong the vertigo is. Okay, now I'll sit back up, pause here for a few seconds to let everything calm back down, and then turn your head 45 degrees to the right and repeat. I'll tip back, my head is 45 degrees to the right and slightly below horizontal, supported on the bed off the edge of the pillow. Here I'll note any vertigo symptoms and how severe they are. And then I'll return to sitting. For the purposes of this demonstration, let's say that when I tilted my head back, I had severe vertigo when my head was turned to the right. That indicates that the right ear canal is affected. So I want to do the treatment on the right side. I'll explain this as I go along. I'll bring my legs up onto the table. I'll turn my head to the right 45 degrees and then lie back. I'm going to stay in this position until the vertigo stops and then wait another 30 seconds. After that 30 seconds has passed, I'll move on to the second position. I'll turn my head to the left so that it's now 45 degrees to the left. Again, I'll wait until the vertigo stops and then another 30 seconds. For severe cases, you might want to wait up to about a minute in each position. Okay, after the time has passed, I'll move into the third position, which is on my left side with my head tilted down into the table about 45 degrees. You can go ahead and rest your head on the table like this. Okay, after my vertigo stops and waiting another 30 seconds, I'll move into the final position. I'll sit up at the side with my chin tucked down. In this position, wait at least 30 seconds and more than likely you'll need to wait a couple of minutes. You wanna really rest in this position. Let your head and everything settle back down again before you get up and move on with your activity. I recommend performing the Epley Maneuver one to two times a day. You'll likely feel best doing this in the evening because afterward then you're able to rest and just relax and then go to bed. You'll likely only require a few sessions of this exercise before you start feeling significantly better. It's normal to feel what I call vertigo hangover after completing these treatments. And that is just a generalized blah feeling, low energy, fatigued, and um, you kind of feel like you're just moving slower. That's normal and you might experience that for anywhere up to one to two weeks after the room spinning stops. It's a good indication that you're getting better, but you're not all the way better yet. During that time, I recommend keeping your activity level to a minimum. If you are a runner or you like to do a lot of exercise that includes fast movements, tone that down, try some simple walking or very, very light exercise during that time. Also, you might do well to try to sleep with your head inclined about 20 degrees and definitely limit any quick, sudden, repeated head movements. With that said, you also don't wanna keep your head too rigid, your neck movement. So keep your head movement natural as you talk, as you look around. It's just fine to move your head up and down and turn it side to side. You just don't wanna do quick, 
jarring head movements. When you do the Dix Hall Pike test, if you experience vertigo in both the right head back position and the left head back position, you likely have bilateral vertigo. It's very difficult to treat both sides at the same time because the treatment for one side tends to undo the treatment for the other side. I suggest starting with your worst side first, doing that for at least a week, then switching to the other side. If you are still experiencing vertigo and not feeling much relief from these repositioning maneuvers, I strongly suggest seeing your healthcare provider and requesting a referral to a physical therapist who is experienced in vestibular rehabilitation. That's the name for the for this overall area of therapy and rehab. Again, that's vestibular rehabilitation. They will be able to take you through more specific tests to determine exactly which canal is affected on which side, and they'll be able to try different treatments with you, take you through those treatments and adjust and modify in real time. That way, you'll be able to receive the specific treatments that you need in order to fully resolve your vertigo. There really is no way to prevent a recurrence of vertigo. However, I would recommend a gradual return to your exercises and activities, especially if you enjoy things like running, tennis, or other sports that include a lot of jarring head motion. I hope that you found the information, the tests, and the treatments in this video to be helpful for identifying where your vertigo is coming from and ultimately helpful in resolving it. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already, and feel free to share this information with anyone you know who has vertigo who might be able to benefit from it. I wish you a speedy and healthy recovery. Here's to your healing, health, and happiness.